on a four meter telescope in Chile, a brand new instrument called Foremost has just had its first light. This is something pretty special. It actually doesn't take images, but will produce some remarkable science anyway. Foremost will investigate the formation and evolution of stars and planets, our home galaxy, the Milky Way, other galaxies stretching back in time and across the universe, black holes, and even other exotic objects. It will do this not by taking images, but by breaking down the light it receives into over 18,000 colors, allowing us to build up knowledge of the chemical compositions, temperatures, velocities, and other physical properties of the objects it observes. In this video, let's get into some more details about what Foremost will do and why it's an incredibly exciting step in the field of astronomy. The Vista telescope in Chile has a 4.1 meter primary mirror and the Foremost instrument has been installed on this existing telescope. Foremost itself is currently undergoing calibration processes and as part of that, we got the first light for the instrument. Normally, when we talk about first light, we get some images to look at, even if they're not perfectly focused or in color yet. In this case though, Foremost is purely a spectrograph instrument, so it doesn't actually take images itself. There used to be an infrared camera on Vista, but it's now been replaced by Foremost, a visible and near-infrared light spectrograph. Forget images for now, we're all about spectra here. That means Foremost breaks down the light it receives into the component wavelengths that make up that light. In almost all situations, the light given out by an object is made up of a load of different wavelengths or colors of light. White light is a combination of all colors, Breaking down that light tells us loads of scientific information about the object that emitted that light. It can tell us about the composition of these objects, as well as details about their temperatures, velocities, and more. This is because all chemical elements and compounds absorb and emit light at very specific wavelengths, and only those wavelengths. It's a sort of chemical fingerprint. For example, hydrogen always absorbs light that's a wavelength of 656.28 nanometers, and we call this the hydrogen alpha line. It's called a line because a spectrum typically looks a bit like this, a jaggedy, noisy line, often with some pretty obvious peaks and troughs like these. These are what we call spectral lines that correspond to specific chemical compounds. Slightly confusingly, sometimes seeing a compound is a peak, and sometimes it's a trough. So there is a bit of a subtlety here. You see, when we break down light and measure how much of each wavelength we see, that's taking a spectrum. And if there's an element present that's emitting loads of the specific wavelength that that element always emits, it would result in a big peak scene at that wavelength, which would tell us about the presence of that element. Similarly though, we could have an element absorbing loads of the wavelength that it likes to absorb. And in that case, we would see a big dip at that wavelength. Just bear that in mind, but it's not too important here. One of the remarkable things about Foremost is how well it can resolve these spectra. You see, it's not really possible to measure every wavelength exactly. We're really measuring little bins or ranges of wavelength. The spectral resolution for Foremost, that's how finely it can split up light, is really impressive. And it can often break down light into around 18,000 finely separated wavelengths. We can think of that as 18,000 shades of color. Many of these human eyes can't see, but the instruments here can. It's like making a rainbow out of the light, but instead of just seven steps of color, there are thousands. For some reason, 18 seems to be a lucky number for Foremost. The area of the southern sky that it can see is around 18,000 square degrees. It can break light down into around 18,000 colors, and 18 teams around the world submitted targets they wanted to be included in the survey to get fibers on those specific targets. Now, some areas will also be revisited multiple times to give us better data in those areas. Just to reassure you, all these numbers are a bit of a coincidence. The 18 in each case is unrelated to the others. But it is nice when we get these little symmetries. Another really amazing thing about Foremost is how many objects it can see at any one time. Foremost has 2,456 fibers, which get placed to cover objects of interest during observations and send the data to the instruments where the light is split up into spectra. Each of those fibers are made of glass, and each has a diameter similar to that of human hair. 
foremost is literally catching ancient light that's been traveling for billions of years in glass fibers that are less than a tenth of a millimeter in diameter. And that is amazing to me. All this means is that it could technically observe around 2,400 objects at any one time and take high resolution spectra of each one with exposures as short as 10 to 20 minutes. In reality, some fibers are usually saved to look at blank bits of space. This is because our atmosphere actually creates its own spectrum too. And since all the light coming from space has to pass through that atmosphere, this is a bit of an annoying thing. To deal with this, blanks are often taken to model the spectrum of the atmosphere at the time the observations are taken. And then this is subtracted from the targets to give us an uncontaminated spectra that's much, much more useful. Now, there are other instruments that actually do have a better spectral resolution than a foremost, meaning they break down the light into even more wavelengths, but they are all single spectrographs, meaning they can only observe a single object at any one time. And one is a lot less than 2,400. So you can see how quickly foremost will take data in comparison. Foremost also has an incredibly large field of view compared to other spectrographs and even many other imaging telescopes. Here's that field of view compared to the full moon. In asteroid terms, we usually use units called degrees to measure sizes on the sky. And the foremost field of view is about 4.2 square degrees in a hexagon shape with a diameter of about 2.5 degrees. To put this in context, rather than me just saying random numbers, let's compare it to some other instruments and telescopes. DESI is a common one to think about. It's the dark energy spectroscopic instrument, and it's a really similar instrument, but in the Northern Hemisphere, and it has a field of view of 3.2 square degrees. So it's just a little bit smaller than foremost. However, DESI does have around 5,000 fibers, meaning it can actually measure more objects simultaneously even with its smaller field of view. Imaging telescopes like Hubble and JWST have absolutely tiny fields of view in comparison, and even the Euclid Space Telescope. The current telescope in space with the largest field of view doesn't beat out foremost. On Earth though, the Vera Rubin Observatory, which is another telescope in Chile, does beat foremost with a huge field of view of 9.6 square degrees. But this is only an imaging telescope. It doesn't do spectra, so they're quite different. In fact, a large part of foremost mission will be to do spectroscopic follow-up of objects observed in Vera Rubin images. Over the next five years, foremost will survey the entire sky that's visible in the Southern Hemisphere two or three times, resulting in more than 20 million spectra being taken. As I said, Foremost will observe a new set of objects every 10 to 20 minutes, and all of the 2,400 fibers can be repositioned to observe new targets in less than two minutes. A few minutes before the next observation needs to start, the next field and targets are selected based on the latest weather and observing conditions to optimize what it's gonna see and how good that data is gonna be. During those observations, the fibers transport the light to one of three spectrographs on Foremost, and each can observe around 800 objects simultaneously, and this is where the light gets broken down. It's decomposed into red, green, and blue components for detailed analysis and to produce these really amazing spectra. Two of the three spectrographs cover the entire wavelength range, from blue all the way down to infrared, which corresponds to wavelengths between 370 and 950 nanometers. These two actually have slightly lower resolution and can break light down into only around 7,000 colors. The third spectrograph, though, has the higher wavelength resolution at around 18,000 colors, but in three narrower color ranges, chosen for their important stellar features. And this is used to better measure things like chemical abundances in stars. Well, now that we know what Foremost can do, Let's look at what it did do during first light. As I said, Foremost can't take images, so it's all spectra we're getting here. The background image in this press release picture wasn't taken by Foremost, but it was taken by a researcher and amateur astrophotographer, Hashwadan Pathak, who takes these amazing images. And this one covers the patch of sky that Foremost was observing during first light. This patch was chosen because it contains this really big galaxy called NGC 253, or the Sculptor Galaxy, which, except for the Magellanic Clouds that orbit the Milky Way, this is the galaxy that appears the largest in the southern sky. Plus, there are loads of other stars and galaxies and interesting things to put fibers on at the same time. 
This includes a nice little cluster of stars down here that we'll get to in a second. These first light spectra are really impressive and exciting to see. But even so, the instrument isn't fully calibrated yet. So these aren't expected to be used for science. That will happen once the survey starts properly in the coming weeks and months, after lots of engineering works leave the instrument science grade. Here though, in just 20 minutes, Foremost observed over 2,000 targets across its huge field of view, simultaneously and in great detail. The Sculptor Galaxy does dominate the image, and Foremost observation also captured a super star cluster, various hot and cold stars and their movements, and gas glowing from newly formed stars in that galaxy. Across the image from the galaxy is the star cluster. It's a globular cluster called NGC 288, and it's a dense group of about 100,000 very old stars. It's inside the Milky Way, but about 30,000 light years away from us, so that's a lot closer than that galaxy. It formed between 12.5 and 13.5 and billion years ago, in the very earliest phases of our galaxy's formation. And we can see that it contains almost entirely helium and hydrogen. The lack of almost any elements heavier than these two reflects the pristine conditions these stars formed in. This is because heavier elements are formed inside stars themselves. So stars need to be born, live, and then explode to spread these heavier elements throughout the universe. And that hadn't happened much at all when these ancient stars were born. Other objects observed in first light include a large variety of bright and faint stars in the Milky Way, a pair of overlapping galaxies 900 million light years away and more than a thousand other galaxies, near and far, stretching up to around 10 billion light years away. Their distances, internal velocities, star formation history, or even the mass of their central black holes can be calculated from these spectra. The sort of flagship spectrum as I think of it, the one being used on the press release image here, is of an active galactic nuclei. That's the name we give to incredibly massive black holes that are eating huge amounts of matter in a so-called accretion disk. That matter gets so hot that it glows bright enough to outshine the entire galaxy it lives within. I don't know exactly why that was chosen for the press release, but it might well be to do with these amazing peaks we can see here, indicating several of the elements inside that AGN. It's just a really nice example of these things being easy to spot. Foremost will conduct at least 25 different scientific programs, and thanks to all of those fibers, it can often conduct many of these surveys simultaneously. For example, a few fibers could be placed to study rare objects, while another program could use most of the remaining fibers to observe large numbers of stars or galaxies at the exact same time. The missions will address fundamental questions about the formation of the Milky Way, the evolution of galaxies, and even the forces that shape the universe. They'll study the origin of chemical elements and the formation of the first stars, the evolution and growth of the Milky Way over cosmic time, the formation and evolution of black holes, and even the makeup and property of the mysterious substances we call dark matter and dark energy. This sounds pretty impressive, but why is it important or useful? Well, Let's think about the example of how we can work out the velocity of an object in space relative to us. Luckily, the best way to do that is using spectra. Some spectral lines are really easy to spot, and we know where they should be and sort of how they would look, but we don't always see that line exactly where we expect. For example, for lots of objects, the H-alpha line that we talked about earlier is pretty obvious, with a distinctive shape and position relative to other lines, but we might not always see it at exactly 656.28 nanometers. We only see it there if the object, the star or galaxy or whatever, is stationary relative to us. If it's moving, the wavelengths get a bit shifted. If that object is moving away from us, the wavelengths get stretched as they're emitted, making them longer and redder. And we call this redshifting. Measuring the difference between where that line should be and where we actually see it gives us what we simply call the redshift of that object. And it tells us not only that it is moving away from us, but it's a measure of how fast it's moving away from us too. Similarly, if the object is moving towards us, the wavelengths shift to shorter or bluer wavelengths. And we'd say that that object is blue shifted. Again, the amount that the wavelengths are shifted tells us how fast that object is moving. With Foremost and its incredible spectral resolution, we can measure the velocities of objects incredibly well. 
down to shifts of less than a kilometer per second, which on the scales we're talking about is really good. Low resolution spectrographs get blurry lines and shifts this small are hard to detect. But the foremost resolution lets it effectively measure differences that are a few hundred meters per second. Thank you so much for watching and especially for making it all the way to the end. Right now, YouTube is seemingly hyper-focused on likes and comments. So if you enjoyed the video and wanna help out the channel, just leaving any comment below is super helpful and I would really appreciate the support. In return, I can show you the cat that's sort of hanging around right under me while I film this. If you want to make sure you see other videos from me, please consider hitting the subscribe button and thank you in advance if you do or already have done that. Leave any questions you still have down below too. And if you like JWST and mugs, feel free to check out some of the cool stuff we have on sale too. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!